Stephen, what's been happening with coach education over the past two years in Cricket Island? Uh, I think we've made quite a jump in the, in the past couple of years. Um, probably It's probably been more of a, a three-year, um, I suppose, period where we've made such a huge, huge jump. Um, previously, kind of the unions were, were taking control of coach education and doing a good job um, with the resources they had and servicing the coaches that... that, that kind of work we're asking about doing courses um, and there wasn't really a whole lot of understanding of, of coaching coach education it was just kind of left to somebody who was keen to do it really um, and we've just seen we've just seen a huge shift in in people's understanding of, of the importance of coaching the value of coaching to, to cricket in Ireland uh, from from the grassroots all the way to the top and um, you know co- coach education is obviously a huge part of that um, there's two two parts to that really one obviously the benefits that guys will get on the coaches will get on the courses itself but also the, the actual awareness from the wider cricketing community about the value of, of those courses and about the value of developing each each individual as a coach in terms of like a coaching philosophy why do you think it's important for coaches to really think about their philosophy when they're coaching and supporting players well, i think it's a it's a great question really um you know a lot, a lot of the time at the moment, we're thinking about why, why we do what we do, uh, why we coach, why we tutor, why we educate ourselves, and uh, and in reality, every, everybody involved in cricket is 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 a cricket geek. You know, loves cricket at heart, um, loves the game to pieces. There probably isn't another sport and that where people feel so passionate about it. Um, and certainly in Ireland, there's there's so many passionate people. About, about the country, about Ireland, and, and cricket fits kind of hand in hand with that. Um, so I suppose the, the philosophy at, at each level is, is really, really important. You know, if you're if you're an under nines coach, you're an under tens coach. Then to understand why you're there, t- to get kids coming back and really enjoying their time, having a great time, meeting friends, having great experiences, and you as a coach have to facilitate that. Then, then you know, if you're aware of that as a philosophy, then 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 spot on, and, and it's an amazing thing to, to to be aware of it and make sure you're you're achieving that each time you run a session. Obviously, f- further up the ladder, um, you know, particularly when when you start working provincial or national squads, you start looking at developing players and developing their elite behaviours um, and their competencies, and your 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 philosophy, philosophy might shift slightly. Uh, but it still won't come away from the, the, the two g- general areas, which is A, for the player to really, really enjoy themselves, and B, for them to be challenged and try and achieve some success. What's your understanding about player-centred, and why do you think coaches should really consider the player before they start to intervene as a coach? Um, well, I think, we're, again, we're probably seeing a bit of a shift in coach education, coach development a little bit. Um, and, and certainly over the last few years since, since I, I've personally been involved, you know, the value of, of, of delivering generic sessions, it, it, it's okay, you know, you, you can get to a certain point, but as any educator would know, any teacher would know, anybody who's interested in other people would know, one size just does not fit all in, in, in whatever field you, you're in. And I think we can all remember the times where we felt a little bit isolated or frustrated within a session or a classroom or wherever and it just hasn't really flicked our switch it hasn't really done it for us and talking about player centered learning um, it's all about the coach being aware of who's in the room with them and who's on the field with them and and what makes them tick what do they want out of the session what are they there for you know some players just want to turn up and have have a great time and and, and that's that's exactly what you you then as a coach need to deliver. But other other players might be a little bit more serious about it, and that that's where they get their enjoyment from. So I suppose as a coach, it, it's absolutely fundamental that everything we do is player centred and, and, and involves them in, in in everything that we as coaches try and do. What's a suitable way for a coach to use a coaching process to, to support players? I think. Um, I think everybody, in the same way that every single player is different, every coach is, is, is different as well, and everybody is going to have their own own method and own own way of doing things. Um, but really the thing that sticks out in my mind was was hearing about Duncan Fletcher when he first actually walked into the English team, and um, one of the stories that was told is that he didn't say a whole lot in the first few months, 
um, and he was just simply gathering information. He's observing, asking questions, really finding out about the players that he was working with through through watching them, watching them interact with each other, listening to them talking, how they talk, what they actually said, and then watching them train and see how committed they were. And through that observation, then that dictated then what what he went and did. And and I couldn't I can't over over I suppose emphasise the importance of that observation as, as an understanding of the individual as, as part of a coaching process um, and I think you know whether you're watching a batter you're watching a wicket keeper you're watching you know a, a seam bowler you want a process um, you want a process to follow it will make you feel a lot more confident and comfortable as a coach to, to, to work with these players but it's really important that it's tailored around the individual because one again one size doesn't fit all the way that you might deal with one player uh, you know they might have just finished school might have had a horrendous day in school really poor you know test result or something they might just want to come out and and relax and hit, hit, hit some balls in a control way um, but get some of that aggression out into the session that's fine you have to facilitate that probably not the time to to start correcting technique and and that's for you as a coach to, to use that process of, of observation understanding of individuals but then move into whether it's a technical thing or a tactical thing or a mental thing that you're looking to develop, what's the best way at that given time to work with that player? Uh, and quite often the answer is actually to stand back and to, and to let things happen. Um, and, and you know some of the most powerful learning will be done on their own, in reflection, maybe in the moment as an individual, or you know most definitely with their peers, with their, with their players feeding back, and that's something that you know, all, all of all of the Irish coaches try and, try and encourage is, is for players to kind of be a part of their own and others' learning. What type of practices can coaches use to support players to develop? There's obviously there's many many different types of, of, of practices that coaches can use, and, and I suppose when they're planning their session, again around their players, who their players are, what do they need, then they might decide on, on a, a particular type of, of session. Uh, some of those can be a fixed fixed type of practice where it's quite a controlled skill, or control um, aspect of a player's game that you're looking to develop. Um, you move maybe slightly towards more variable where you, you bring in maybe a tactical element to it. You, you challenge the players and challenge their thinking a little bit more. Maybe involve them a little bit more in the process. Uh, of maybe even designing a particular session which enables them to, to develop their skills but within, a, a, as the word says, a variable context. Um, giving it more, um, I suppose, realism towards, to, towards a game. And then right at the far end of the spectrum, you're really looking to try and recreate a game situation in as much as possible. You know, elite environments talk about trying to put players under pressure, maybe even sometimes more pressure than they'll face within a game environment to, to ready themselves for playing in the World Cup or, you know, taking the catch of the last ball and winning it for the team. And, and those kind of scenarios and situations you look to create... Um, there's a lot of talk and, and, and evidence based and, and research going into games based learning and the value of that and you know we're over here as a coaching team we're really behind practicing like that and giving a lot of ownership to players but only at the right time you know there's still time for fixed practicing and, and really developing players technique um, and, and that's essential just as game based learning and variable practices as well. What does the future of coach education look like? From from September, uh, we're going to see an introduction of, of a new courses, um, which has has been centred on on a huge amount of research uh, put in from from the ECB uh, coach coach education coach development team into into the, the best methods of, of coaching. Um, there's been, I suppose, a huge update in in, in how, how we're supposed to coach and should we, should we follow a process of coaching and is that is that appropriate for every individual? And I think the the biggest shift or the biggest change has been has been about well, wh what are we there for? What are we doing there? And, and, and we're there to help individuals and help players improve as cricketers, improve improve as people, and and that's our role as coaches. So so naturally, you know. When, when, when things are changing, when, when the understanding of coaching is changing, the role of coaching, the importance of coaching, 
is changing, then it's only natural that coach education moves along with that and we try and support our coaches in the best way possible for what we're, we're looking um, to them to deliver. So, you know, the, the new courses, uh, I, I suppose, it, it's, it's, not, it's not a shift away from what's, what's been done before, but it's, it's building on, on what's been delivered previous. You know, there's some absolutely superb coaches that, that have been through the, the courses, um, you know, going back the last, last 15, 20 years, but guaranteed every single one of those good coaches continually reflects continually observes and more importantly puts the player at the centre of what they're doing and, and, and most coaches do that naturally um, and, and I think the, the new courses actually help coaches understand that a little bit more clearly about what their role is and, and how best to support each individual. Um, there's a shift, there's a split in, in, in the course structure between working with children which is defined as, as uh, under 13, and then working with young people and adults. And I think that's a really, really positive move um, because there's two clearly defined um, different environments that, that you're working with as a coach and really different behaviours and different things you need to understand as a coach. Um, you know, perhaps, perhaps in the past, there might, have been, there might have been courses where you might have a test or a one-day international cricketer on the same course as a, as, a, as a parent or a volunteer. And whilst that's a great experience, to maximise the, 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 I suppose, the learning for both people on that course, we need to understand where, where these people are coaching and where they want to end up. Um, and more often than not, you know, if you've got someone like an ex-international coming onto a course, you want you want to ensure that they're 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 facilitated and they're helped in the best way to, to go out and coach as soon as they can and be confident as soon as they can with the support of the course that, that they take and and no doubt that that, that what's happening is, is going to serve the coach's needs um, a lot closer uh, and therefore by proxy it's going to be a hell of a lot better for the players. Um, Quite simply, the coaches are going to be a lot, a lot more understanding of, of players' needs, um, regardless of, of, of where they might find them in a school context, club, regional level, where, wherever they're, they're coaching. Um, certainly, hope that the coaches, coaches will be uh, better prepared.